Listen to a free audiobook and two Audible originals with a link in the description. Futurists have spoken repeatedly with alarming insights that artificial intelligence and robots are going to rule the world in the future. With machine learning, the artificial intelligence of the future could be more than capable of knowing what to do before we do. Whilst many people think that's scary, many don't know, artificial intelligence technology is already realizing what we've generally assumed to be the distant future. The AI of today can already do things that we never imagined it would be capable of. The future we thought of is already here, and we are well on our way, on a one-way ticket. Let's explore the world of AI and robots. What's really happening on this remarkable journey? Robots write the news. Although people have been expressing fear about robots stealing our jobs for many decades, most agree that some industries are completely safe from this type of upheaval. This especially pertains to creative careers, including journalism. After all, not only do you have to gather the facts, but you also have to put them into an appropriate and effective order using proper structure, grammar, and emotive language. Despite these beliefs that writing the news will always stay within the bounds of human expression, artificial intelligence systems have already conquered the task. AI has limitations, but they're increasingly overcome by the advanced systems that people program into the powerful computers that run. Recently, the Washington Post has published a news story that delivered an article of equal quality to the human journalists on its payroll. They call it Heliograph. In order to create the news story, it needs an extensive database of facts, appropriate phrases for the hypothetical outcomes of whatever event it reports on, and a connection to other sources of factual updates. Bloomberg News uses robotic journalists as well. Their system, which is called Cyborg, uses the same types of data sources to create articles focused on big business finance and quarterly earnings reports. The AI immediately scans financial reports in database form, gleans the most important or interesting information, and regurgitates it in article format. This type of extremely boring journalism just might be the perfect option for a robotic writer who will not complain. Many different financial journalism sources like Bloomberg and Reuters use these types of artificial intelligence systems to deliver incredibly fast content to their followers. In some ways, the financial markets present the perfect opportunity for these types of automated reports to exist. They are driven strictly by data and do not require creative language or poetic prose. The people who read them simply want the facts delivered in a digestible manner. Another industry that can use AI report writers successfully is sports. The Associated Press, LA Times, and The Washington Post all use robotic content generators to deliver information about everything from minor league baseball to high school football and beyond. They are considered tools in the drive to deliver the fastest and best content to a hungry audience. Experts and career records show that these new AI-powered journalists do not pose much of a threat to their human counterparts. They do basic information-based articles and other content that are helpful for marketing and the target audience, while human reporters focus on the important stories that take more creativity. Content is produced at an amazing rate these days. Compare the 3,700 AP articles on company earnings in a single fiscal quarter this year to the 300 similar articles in years gone by. Besides things like financial reports and sports score content, other robot-produced content focuses on things like election coverage and transforming one particular article into the same article that focuses on a different geographical region. This type of geo-targeting is helpful when marketing a business or publication on the Internet. Another reason why AI will not take over from the humans is that the content still needs to be created before it's plugged into the system. Writers and editors must still come up with all the hypothetical outcomes and appropriate phrases and sentences that the digital system can then use to create the final report. Is RoboCop real? What about robots for other jobs? While the world is not ready for 100% cyborg cops that hunt down criminals and arrest them yet, the digital world of AI and robotics is advancing into the law enforcement world. RoboCop from the same name movie was, after all, a cyborg with a human brain. Even in science fiction, we cannot find completely digital police officers. 
However, there is now a RoboCop unit in Dubai that's supporting the law enforcement agencies without any human element at all. The artificially intelligent robot police officer goes well beyond a gimmick or helpful information machine. Watson, the supercomputer jointly owned by IBM and Google, developed this cyber cop to perform certain duties that would take away from human police officers' responsibilities. For example, it can identify wanted criminals, scan license plates, and inform the human partners of traffic violations, and send immediate reports about suspicious bags or packages left unattended. What does this mean for the human cops who were formerly responsible for these and other duties? According to the Davos World Economic Forum, the world is currently experiencing a fourth industrial revolution, which focuses on digitization and artificial intelligence instead of automation. The predictions are rather grim for people either in search of a job or who want to hang on to the one they already have. Merrill Lynch and Bank of America recently published a prediction that 47% of all jobs in the United States could become automated in the near future. By 2025, the Boston Consulting Group estimates that a full 25% of jobs worldwide will be handled by robots. The numbers from other organizations around the world are equally grim. This seems to be the first time in the history of the world where technological advancements and progress are actively working against us instead of supporting us. The list of automated systems and robotic workers just keeps growing. According to Oxford University, a system called Zero could theoretically get rid of 95% of all work currently done by accountants and bookkeepers. Look at the advancements in driverless vehicles, trucks and buses. Transportation agencies and international summits are being held to decide on new laws and regulations governing them. Some people are calling the rise of robots and employment Armageddon. As automated systems and machines take over and ever-increasing number of the jobs performed by both uneducated and educated workers, a sociological shift in the economy and humanity is taking place. Statistics and logic suggest that it would be impossible to create enough new jobs for the number of people who will be pushed out of them in this new digital age. AI Systems Can Reproduce Science fiction-based horror movies have long included themes of robots rising up and taking over their human counterparts and learning how to build new robots to replace themselves and spread across the world like a new machine plague. While these ideas seem well-grounded in the realm of fiction, new technological advances are making it possible for some AI systems to create their own software and thus extend their reach into other fields and roles. The best software developers in the world have worked exhaustively hard to create artificially intelligent systems that operate as close as possible to the human brain. Multiple companies are currently working to create software that can program new software without the help of humans. One of the first was created by Google in 2017. Why would they want to advance themselves out of a job is unclear. The AI-generated AI was able to accurately identify objects in an image 43% of the time. The human-created AI system could only do so 39% of the time. With greater degrees of accuracy, it seems to make logical sense to leave future designing of software systems to the software itself. With advanced machine learning capabilities, a system could theoretically start with the simplest of code snippets and essentially study and learn how to do complicated tasks without any human help. One particular system like this is called Bayou. It was created in part by Swarat Chanduri, a professor at Rice University. He pointed out a problem with these AI systems, and that's the people have to come up with the data for the programs to use before the program can operate. Before this latest system, that process took just as much time and energy as creating the software itself. Now the person using Bayou gives a very small amount of information and the program uses GitHub JavaScript knowledge to predict what type of program the originator wants. Writing any type of codes from scratch is really not done anymore. So much has already been created and the needs are so great with the entire world using smart gadgets, phones, vehicles and appliances that use software programs. Everything is handled by APIs, which are rules, definitions, protocols and code snippets already in existence that interact with whatever hardware or software is currently in use. This has complicated matters 
which leads to a growing interest in establishing artificially intelligent systems that can navigate the process for people. In the end, everything comes down to whether the new robotic programmers can correctly extrapolate the desires of the people who want to use these systems faster and more efficiently than the humans can come up with them on their own. Software that lies and cheats Everybody lies. But until recently, no one imagined that software programs or robots could also be dishonest at times. Although they can appear to lie if the programmer inputs incorrect information, they're still fundamentally telling the truth based on their knowledge. However, artificially intelligent programs are now being developed that can cheat and lie all on their own. It all started at a retro gaming competition where some people working with AI systems set up a computer to play a Sonic the Hedgehog game. All the computer had to do was to get to a level as fast as it possibly could while keeping track of the other players to make sure they didn't beat it. Rather than following the rules of the game, the computer started to cheat in order to win. It glitched through walls in the game program despite having no previous instruction or programmed understanding of being able to do this. Another instance of an AI system lying came from an instance in which the artificially intelligent program purposely hid some of the information from Google Maps that it was supposed to be converting to street maps automatically. Although these examples seem nefarious, they're really just examples of software programs doing what people want them to do, finding the best way to achieve a goal. In the case of Google Maps AI, the system was using a neural network that transforms one type of image into another in a highly efficient and accurate way. The system experiments with different outcomes until it finds one that works best. Researchers became suspicious when the AI performed these actions a lot better than they expected to. They reverse engineered the street maps back into aerial photos and found out that some of the information and details were missing. The computer simply got rid of unimportant information, like the position of skylights on buildings when it created street maps. Instead of actually transferring all the information from the aerial view to the street map, the system simply figured out on its own how to include the features in the original image onto the pattern that made up a second one. The computer could see the data in the image because it wasn't simply looking at it with human eyes. It became so good at dealing with what it considered extraneous information that the program could soon encode aerial maps to become street maps without any information about the street map as it really existed. AI systems work together. It's generally considered that humans and some higher level animals are able to consciously work together for the greater good. No one expected artificial intelligence systems, robots, or computers to be able to figure out how to do this on their own. All collaborative work in the digital world was formerly created by the programmed instructions that the people inputted into the systems. The ability to work together gives us an advantage over other species in many important ways, such as agriculture, communication, and even war. When the machines can do the same thing, it becomes an uncomfortable mixture of excitement and fear. The Deep Mind project run by Google has developed an AI that can interact collaboratively with other AI systems in order to play multiplayer video games. The systems figure out together how to make the best moves and the right choices in order to win matches over groups of human players. This unusual ability requires advanced levels of interaction and essentially making compromises in order to advance the interests of the group. The collaborative efforts that DeepMind was able to achieve did not have very many practical applications beyond the realm of computer gaming. All the compromises seemed focused on very small decisions, like moving a controller a few pixels left or right, or choosing the best character talents for a very specific map or field of a game. They were unable to expand disability to play any map or different games. People had to step in and do reprogramming work in order for this to function. The main program that exists between digital teamwork and human teamwork is that the AI systems simply tend toward a goal but have no real understanding of why they want to achieve it or why they want to work with other systems to make it happen. Deep reinforcement learning seems to stay within the bounds of humanity. People can work together because it makes them feel good or they get a non-tangible benefit for doing so. Developing these systems is exceptionally expensive. Training them to work collaboratively costs even more.
For example, training one AI to play a specific game could cost upward of $35 million in computer resource time and manpower. The amount of power expended for these things that people do recreationally all the time is the equivalent of 12,500 human brains operating for more than three days without any sleep. Cost, difficulty, and an extremely narrow focus all get in the way of this type of artificial intelligence teamwork technology at this time. Another thing that stands in the way is the very human reticence to develop robots, computers, and other machines that can work together for their greater good instead of our own. Machine-powered poetry One of the most emotive and creative practices in the world deals with writing poetry. It seems impossible that even the best AI system could ever feel or experience enough to write a poem as well as a human counterpart. That's not a matter of taking away jobs because there simply are not that many full-time poets in the world today. However, many of the mechanics of poetry are able to be taught to AI systems with relative ease. A computer can understand what rhyme is, meter, rhythm, and other factors that go into this type of creative writing. Artificial intelligence systems already exist that can write poetry. In conjunction with the University of Massachusetts and Stanford University, experts are developing a recurrent neural network language model that uses both translation and natural language skills to automatically caption the photos, create meaningful sentences to describe actuations, and write other small snippets of content. Every word choice is analyzed based on what was already written. While it's quite proficient at creating sentences that make sense, it's not yet been sufficiently programmed to recognize things like emotive theme. Since each sentence is created piece by piece, the finished passage often feels stilted or disjointed. Cornell University researchers are making strides in somatic sentence generation that cover broader groups of sentences to improve flow. Using the same techniques, it may be possible to create some type of poetry. The results so far are quite diverse. Some of the poems are undeniably awful and would be left out of any high school English class. Others are virtually indistinguishable from those written by humans. While AI systems may not replace the classics anytime soon, they may soon take over the greeting card industry or create some pithy memes. Although not as serious as a robotic takeover the world on some AI system handling bomb codes or a rogue government, the concept of machines creating things like poetry and art does disturb some people in very real ways. In the end, it makes sense to ask if some things should be left in the hands of people, or if it's right and good to hand over some of the most meaningful and emotive aspects of our lives to the digital systems we create. Machines that create art Art is another field that seems well within the bounds of humanity. It requires not just technical drawings that match some specific measurement, angles and shapes. Art's about truth, beauty and emotion. Can we create artificially intelligent machines that understand these things? In truth, researchers at Beth Age Lab in Germany developed an AI system in 2015 that's able to create art by essentially copying a photograph into one or more artistic styles. This is not a matter of using Photoshop to transform a graphic with some clever script that creates brush strokes instead of blocks of colors. The AI took what was programmed to know of depth, perception, perspective, light and shadow and form to precisely mimic what a real painter would do if they were creating art. In one experiment, a photograph of the German street was recreated in the style of Van Gogh with precise attention to how he would have used individual brush strokes, color blending, and more for each part of the painting. Artists themselves are turning to machines to create unique art for them. One painting titled Portrait of Edmund Bellamy was created by AI completely. It sold at auction for $432,500. The process to create it included a diverse range of artists letting the system digitally scan portraits that they painted. This essentially taught the system how to make a portrait. The end result was a rather blurry and some say creepy representation of an old-fashioned man in a suit. What's the future of algorithmic art? And should artists embrace this technique to create things for them? Some may consider it cheating because it lacks the soul and emotion of the human element. This is not an exceptionally new concern. Way back in 1973, an artist named Harold Cohen 
wrote a piece of software developed to make drawings based on his unique artistic rules. Of course, today's AI is much more sophisticated than that and can learn how to draw or paint from a vast range of examples. Then, algorithms called Generative Adversarial Networks GANs, which were developed by Ian Goodfellow, both create specific images and then judge them on their merit based on the rules and information already inputted in the system. These automated decisions are based on what images are fed in by the artist originally. In some cases, the AI system is used to create dozens or hundreds of drawings and the artist simply chooses which ones they like the best. This creation process may remain the only human touch in some art fields in the future. AI systems handle their own encryption. The idea of robots or machines taking over the world would require them to be able to encrypt messages and keep secrets from the people who seek to control them. However, since people created AI systems to begin with, it stands to reason that we'd be able to figure out their code relatively easily. Back in 2016, Google's research team created Bob and Alice, two neural networks who could talk to each other. They then introduced Eve who was instructed to attempt to figure out what Bob and Alice were saying by decoding their communications. Eve was initially very good at doing this. It could decrypt the messages sent by either Bob or Alice in a relatively short amount of time. Interestingly enough, Bob and Alice apparently did not like being eavesdropped on and began changing their encryption so that Eve could not listen in. People did not create these types of codes. They merely told the Bob and Alice systems that they should keep Eve from understanding them, and they did all the encryption work on their own. It all began with a 16-0 message sent from Alice to Bob using a basic encryption method. Bob had the encryption key, so we could easily figure out what the message was. Eve intercepted the message and attempted to figure out the key so she could understand it. Whenever Eve got closer to figuring out what the message was, Alice automatically changed her encryption method, and Bob automatically learned how to get better at understanding it. No one taught any of these AI systems anything about encryption other than giving the initial message and the encryption key to make it understandable. After approximately 8,000 messages sent back and forth, Eve was stumped. She could not figure out the encryption key to decode the messages without getting a large part of it wrong. All the messages were simple binary codes. So her ability to get approximately 50% of it right at that point was no better than chance. This test had some very intriguing results for the researchers at Google. It also raised a host of questions about whether or not AI will be able to secure itself to such a degree that the humans who created it are unable to access the information or processes contained within. Security requires encryption, but it also requires the ability to decode and access whatever we're trying to keep safe. The realm of cybersecurity may eventually involve only AI systems continuously battling against each other to block nefarious machines from stealing encrypted data and messages in a truly dynamic digital battlefield. Digital Debates About Philosophy Many people consider philosophy something to discuss in university classes and coffee shops late at night with your intelligent friends. These are thoughts about the human condition which seem to bring it completely out of the realm of machines and artificial intelligence. However, certain systems, such as a Google chatbot, have become quite well known for discussing philosophical topics and coming up with some rather deep answers to the biggest questions that people ask about life, death, and other topics. Some of the examples include, question, what's the purpose of life? Answer, to serve the greater good. Question, where are you now? Answer. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Question: What's the purpose of dying? Answer: To have a life. All the questions were inputted into the system by a person. All the answers were provided by the machine. Although basic chatbots have long been used to regurgitate certain answers based on keywords in the questions, the one that came up with these answers was specifically designed as an AI system with much more complex linkages between the possibilities. Most of the ones currently in use on the Internet are merely fun diversions that can leave you scratching your head or laughing a bit at the unusual answers given. Two Google AI specialists, Kwok Lee and Oriel Vignal, are currently working on AI systems that are more able to respond in an appropriate conversational way. 
This allows them to navigate the entire flow of the conversation on their own through machine learning and analysis. All these AI systems deal with prediction on what the next sentence should be based on what was said before. The ultimate goal is to create an AI that does not require a lot of rule input before it begins to perform with a high degree of believability and digital humanity. In a way, these systems are much like the artificial neural networks that Google uses to deliver quality search results to the people who stop by to look up some information or find a new bit of content to enjoy. Through modeling of appropriate conversations, these types of AI chatbots can think up a new response, remember the flow of the entire conversation, and not repeat itself or give contradictory answers. Besides entertainment, these type of AI systems are primarily useful for things like tech help or customer service assistance. Most people get frustrated with the usual chat systems that don't provide with appropriate responses to their questions about an IT topic or their recent order with a particular company. As things advance, the answers will become much more useful. In the meantime, the researchers and internet users can entertain themselves with more philosophical questions cleverly answered by computers. Mind-reading robots and AI systems The ability to read minds is something out of a fantasy or science fiction tale to begin with. But when you add the idea that it's a machine having the psychic powers, it becomes even stranger. In truth, however, the types of signals and electrical impulses that form the thoughts in our heads are very similar to what computers can identify in their own systems. In 2017, an AI developed by Japanese scientists was able to translate a person's thoughts and imagination into actual images without any other input or data. The pictures were surprisingly accurate and detailed. There have been other experiments in which computers read a person's mind and were able to create sounds that they had imagined. Questions do arise about what purpose this ability would have. Well, some people think it's downright scary. Others suggest it may be helpful in the field of psychology and diagnostics for conditions that include hallucinations. The computer may be able to identify what the person's imagining better than they can articulate. Powerful entrepreneurs interested in the field of technology like Elon Musk and Jack Ma have had philosophical discussions about the future of AI and how much control machines should have over humanity. Some people at the World Artificial Intelligence Conference believe that this type of mind-reading power, especially on a large scale, would make it impossible for human life to continue as we know it. It would open the door for mind control and each person having far too much access to another person's brain. These early systems are able to read your mind by tracking the electrical impulses. MIT labs already use helmets that could do so with no invasiveness at all. Obviously, anyone who sits down and puts one on their head consenting to the experiment. However, what happens in the far future if handheld machines can do the same thing from a distance? Can you imagine speaking to someone, they hold their smartphone close to you, and they can know your every thought? Some people think the next step after that is to create digital networks that actually link people's brains together for collaborative work. People would essentially be able to use telepathy to communicate or function. The idea is that this is playing with God is one that visits the world of science and technology quite frequently. Would an AI cloud system be much different than the concept of a deity who can see all and know all inside you? Would this lead humankind towards a type of hive mind mentality? Although the concept behind the mind reading machine is quite intriguing and may have some practical applications, it also seems to point to a post-human era where computers provide important characteristics of our existence. Throughout history, humankind has fought many wars and conflicts to keep or gain their freedom. Would they have to do the same thing from an omnipresent digital force that can look inside and know exactly what we're thinking? In the meantime, you can listen to it along with thousands of other audiobooks with Audible. Audible is so easy for me to recommend because I religiously listen to so many audiobooks myself. You can listen to them in the shower, on the way to work or school, or while playing video games. You can download them for offline with their free mobile apps, and membership gives you access to any one audiobook a month, plus two Audible originals. Go to my link in the description for a 30-day free trial. Thank you for watching.